All right. So to in surface mode, the way that you increase the resolution of an object is you subdivide it instead of increasing the voxel resolution. And the way you subdivide it is with the subdivide tool. Now the subdivide tool in 3D code is kind of interesting because we don't have to subdivide the entire model all at once. We can subdivide only part of it. Now in our case, we are going to subdivide the entire object, but just to show you real quick, I'll take an area here that's relatively simple. So you can see the wireframe here. I hope you can see it anyway. And what I can do is I can paint in a selection area. And then if I subdivide the frozen area, which is the selected area, hit apply, then you'll see that area has four times the polygon density as the area around it. Now I don't want to do that. I just want to subdivide the entire object. Take a few seconds depending on how complex your model is. This one isn't super complex, it's only about four million triangles, which I know may sound like a big number, but uh, professional 3D models for characters can go all the way up to, to 10 or 20 million triangles. This guy's relatively simple. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smooth out some of this. Probably we'll cover that up with some detail alphas later. So the area I want to focus on right now would be the mouth. Now with the amount of polygons that we have, we can draw some pretty, some pretty fine detail here. I may subdivide this area around the lips by itself a little bit later. We'll have to see how this looks. But if I bring up the reference again, now we're going to be focusing on this region. So what I want to focus on right now is getting this really well-defined lip that looks like it's actually wrapping around the, uh, the corner teeth. Whereas this one doesn't really look like it's wrapping around, it just looks like a piece of the main body. It doesn't really look like a piece of skin that's been stretched over the area. So I'll keep symmetry on for now, but I'll probably be turning it off pretty soon. Okay, now the key here is that it's really hard to see, let me see if I can zoom in a bit closer, is that there is a crevice here underneath the lip. That's what really makes it look like it's actually wrapping around something. So we need to add that in to our model. So I'll go in with this third alpha right here, and holding down control, I'll start to carve down into a really look like, make it look like there's a space there underneath that lip. Okay, so I'm going to turn off symmetry now. And now what I want to do is I want to go in with the live clay tools because this will let me get a level of detail that I simply can't get with the uh, regular drawing tools. So what I'll do is I'll go to live clay. I'm going to pick this last alpha down here. It's kind of very, very sharp one. Actually, I'm going to stick with this one for now. Maybe this fourth one. So what we can do now is that by drawing, you can see the polygon level, the polygon density really increasing for this area. So we can really start to sculpt in some very smooth detail work. You can already see the difference that that's making. So with a very weak brush strength, I'm pretty much just trying to subdivide these polygons adaptively as I sculpt on them. And once we subdivide it, we can go back to using the draw tool if that's what would work for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be one of these live clay tools. And then I'll go maybe to uh, crease clay, sort of try and 
increase that down a little bit. Really start to crease that down. And now let's start to actually focus on some of these wrinkles in here. Be careful with these uh, live clay tools though. Be very careful particularly about using a really really small one because that could give you a lot of polygons that you're not necessarily counting on. So with that I'm just going to go ahead and start adding some wrinkles to the rest of this.